Hey, everybody. Thank you so much for taking time to, to spend some time with me and our awesome friend, Dave Banco from Dart Direct Mail. He has got a really powerful jam-packed presentation that he's going to be going over right now to help you learn how you can win with direct mail. Dartmailings.com. I'm going to chat it out to you. Is the link to their awesome program. Craig Wiggins and I have used Dave and his team for, I don't know, four or five years, something like that. Some, I mean, years. We've referred dozens and dozens, likely over 100 agents to Dave over the years. Agents all across the country use his awesome programs. I cannot endorse it more. Dave, you're awesome, and I appreciate your partnership with CDC. I'm looking forward to seeing you in Vegas, man. Yeah, Vegas, absolutely. August 11th and 12th. It's going to be great. You're one of our top sponsors. You're going to be there, networking with everybody there. As an FYI, as an FYI for everybody, we only have a few spots left for Vegas. We already sold out once, had to upgrade the room. But seriously, we only have like maybe 20 or 30 seats left. If you want to come to the CDC Vegas event, August 11th and 12th, let me know ASAP. And let's talk today with Dave. All of us from every carrier from all across the country, welcome to the call. Dave, let's talk to these people about how they can win with direct mail, my friend. Awesome. Thank you, Joseph. And I appreciate the, uh, the opportunity to speak with you all here. And uh, it's an honor to be associated with uh, the CWC organization. As you know, they're fantastic and provide so many agents with, with much needed help. Um, but my name again is Dave Banco. I'm the president of Dart Direct Mail. And I'm here today to talk to you about some of the most critical mistakes to avoid and to, to tell you the latest industry secrets to help you get the most success out of your direct mailing campaign. As, as, as many of you probably know, direct mailing is one of the, it's one of the most profitable forms of marketing that you can do with your agency. And direct mail has a, has a place in both large and small agencies with, with varying budgets. And it can certainly be one of the best pieces that you can use to grow your agencies if you're doing it correctly. Uh, last time I did one of these was just right at the end of, uh, of 2020 and right at the beginning of 2021. And, you know, really, we were promised that, hey, this year, everything would be different, right? Uh, well, I, I think with the economy and with the latest news and, um, you know, we can all agree that everything really is a whole lot different than it was. Um, but just you know, one thing that I did is I went back and looked at what Deloitte Consulting said was going to happen with the insurance industry in 2022. Um, they had talked about, get to the next screen there. Okay, sorry about that. Um, one of the things that they had talked about was um, that, just give me a second here, let me get this down. Okay, here we go. Um, that one of the, that we were all looking for accelerated growth in 2022. A majority of the survey respondents um, really expected that um, that revenues were going to be significantly better, um, but they cautioned about things like inflation, climate and weather concerns, um, and rapidly involving customer product and purchase behavior. What does that all mean? Customers are going to be more involved in the process of, of finding their insurance and their insurance, and they're gonna find new and creative ways to shop. The third thing they said, attracting talent and retaining talent in an evolving hybrid work environment will be more important than ever, as I'm sure a lot of you are, uh, are agreeing with and shaking your heads now with. Um, fourth, insurers need to find a way to balance technology adaptation with maintaining the human touch. And, and really here's what that, what that means, is there are, insurers are gonna be increasingly dependent on emergent technologies, data sources to drive efficiency, enhance cybersecurity. Um, but at the same time, they're gonna expand capabilities across the organization to improve customer experience. Um, and they're gonna do it with automation, but there's gonna be an increasingly important piece to this, which is providing really good customized service where it's needed and, and preferred. With the pandemic also have come opportunities to boost stakeholder trust. In part, this really, they're referring to how many insurance companies will be taking more steps to know and engage their customers and potential customers and to provide better service, better coverage, and thus a, a better experience. And these last two are especially the frontline stuff that they're relying on you, the agents, to, uh, to handle. 
creating that initial positive customer experience and continuing that through really the entire customer life cycle is going to be is going to be so valuable. But but why? Um, so let's look at let's look at some stats um, that we can um, see on, on why that's important. So obviously every customer interaction is valuable. Um, it's not only the the company name on the line and the carrier name on the line, but it's also you as the agent name also on the line. So these um, word of mouth types of re referrals and recommendations are out of that positive customer experience. And this is what I think that that Deloitte study was really looking into was the, you know, why is, why is these last two, those, um, you know, providing better customer experience so important. And you can see here that four times more likely to buy a product people are when the business is referred by friends. 85% of small businesses are discovered by customers due to word of mouth recommendations. And customers acquired through uh, word of mouth spend 200% more than the average customers. 92% trust them. Um, it brings in five times more sales, word of mouth marketing does than, than any kind of paid media. Um, consumers, 74% um, of them describe it as critical influencers to their purchasing decisions. 88% trust the reviews. And all of this drives 6 trillion in annual um, con consumer uh, spending through and due to word of mouth uh, marketing. So it's not just the people that's, you know, standing in their driveway, they're talking to their neighbors or talking to their friends on the phone. Word of mouth has spread to the internet, as, as I'm sure all of you now know. Um, it's things like the, the Google reviews, the Yelp reviews, talking to the people on Facebook. Um, you know, you've got your, your, your BBB ratings and even your own corporate websites will influence people to leave reviews about you. So this is more and more important that you treat these customers, you know, right from the beginning with that good, you know, that good um, positive interactions that they have. So you may wonder why the heck would a direct mail guy sit here and talk to you about positive conversations and, and word of mouth marketing. Now, one thing the stats don't talk about is that as an example, with, with, with every single um, positive experience, it could lead to a word of mouth marketing, but, but it has to start somewhere. Let's say you have one customer that you treated so well, they wanna to brag to 10 of your friends, 10 of their friends, and they wanna give you lots of positive compliments. And let's say that one or two of those people that they talk to become your customers over the next few months, and they tell five to 10 friends, and you obviously can see where this is going. Now, what if you could have 10 or 20 of those potentially, you know, super spreader, um, you know, people that are, that are talking great about you um, every single week. And that's where good marketing options like direct mail come into play. So I wanted to pass along some of those secrets and, and, and really describe from a, from a high level as well as a detailed level, um, how you can do direct mail better. And, and this is whether you're doing it through um, a company like Dart or you're, you're doing this on your own. All of these are great best practices for, uh, for you to consider. So let's first start with the why. Um, why should you consider you know, generating these, these positive conversations? So, I mean, direct mail as an overall has less competition. Um, that, you know, compared to hundreds of emails that people get every single week, on average, people get less than 17 direct mail pieces. The average lifespan um, for direct mail is over 17 days. And we've actually been hearing from agents that reply to these months later, you know, that, that, that people that they've reached out to four and five months are, are still calling them. So it has a really good shelf life. It's a preferred source of medium. So it's not super intrusive to them, let's say like a pop-up ad on, on a digital marketing campaign might be, um, that consumers, 73% of them say they would prefer to be contacted by brands via direct mail because um, they can read it really whenever they want. 90% of direct mail gets opened compared to 20 and 30% of emails. 
And I think that even that is, is a generous number for, for emails. And up to 98% of the people check their mail every single day and spend um, an upwards of, of 30 minutes with it. So now let's, let's get into the who part of direct mail. Who are you gonna try and reach and who makes the most sense? Um, and there, you know, this is, this is direct mail can be kind of confusing. So I wanna kind of break this up into more of a bite-sized chunks, so to speak. Um, so let's start with, you know, again, that who, where, who does you target? You know, and, and, and this is really just called your, your target market. And, and this is who you wanna market to. And, you know, usually this is what we generally recommend as advisable is to start right in your, in your own backyard. So that's really like a five or a 10 mile radius. And, you know, these, these are people that, um, uh, that may know you, that that could be your friends, that could be your, your neighbors. Um, if you're sponsoring your local baseball team or something like that, then there's, there's, that, there's that great community element to, um, to, to, this, to this quick radius around your house. Um, and, and, the, and the good news is, is with direct mail, you can get really specific as far as who you target. So you can keep that within that five or 10 mile radius, or if you're in a real populated area, you keep that to a one or two mile radius. I mean, it's all, uh, all up to you, but you can be real specific on that stuff. And you can choose you know, real specific demographics. You can choose everything from household income to home values to year built, um, live, you know, home living space. But if we really wanna pare it down, I would say that there's really three uh, best selects that I recommend that you consider. The first one is really home value. And this is even a better indicator of wealth than is um, overall income. Um, and it'll vary in different parts of the country as far as what those numbers actually mean. But if you eliminate that bottom 30% of your market, usually 70% is that top 70% is a good place to start. You'll find more needs here for uh, multi-policy opportunities, which as, as uh, a lot of you have learned today is, is even more increasingly important. The second one is uh, living square footage, and that's just the living space, um, and, and really to put a minimum on that number, because it does really two things. It gives you um, a, a validation that the home data is good, and it also eliminates homes that might have bad home value data. Now, many of the, the compilers out there, the data compilers that are, that are putting together these lists, um, are going off of state compiled data for home value. You know, that home inspector that comes out records you know what your uh, what your home is you know, the size of it is and checks everything out um, they're relying on that person's data to determine the 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 um, the, the living uh, square footage of their home so you know those guys aren't aren't the aren't the greatest and the data is not always correct um, and you could find where there would be let's say a million dollar home value with 250 feet of living space. And if you're not in Los Angeles, San Francisco, or New York, um, it's probably not going to be correct. And that, that 250 might actually be the size of your pool house. The third critical one that we suggest is the homes that have the most competitive price, which are going to be the age of the home. So depending on your area, what that means, um, you know, you want, to, you want to certainly consider where you're going to be the most competitive price-wise. But you don't want to go overboard with these um, as, as the more people can fall off that are actually should be in your target. For instance, if you make it mandatory that, I don't know, let's say people between the ages of 39 and 47 with two kids, a second home, live in a new home with three cars, um, it may sound like a really good target, but it might only yield a handful of prospects for you. And so, you, so you, you've got to balance that data because the way that data um, and compilers work is the fact that if um, the only way that you can get all of those is if, if people qualify for all of them. So there might be homes that people that fit in that demographic, but if the data doesn't have them as um, with two or more kids, that, they, uh, that they'll be eliminated from that. So you're eliminating people that you know, might, might be perfect targets for you. So again, it's got, it's got to be a good 
balance between you know a good size audience where you can be competitive um, and be in the best position to help these homeowners. So as you can see, data it, it gets really important in the direct mail world. Bad data is the, the culprit for seventy percent of failed campaigns. So seventy percent of campaigns that fail fail because they have bad data. So you could have the perfect message delivered at the best time, but if it's to the wrong audience, your campaign will fail. Um, uh, the example I like to use in this is trying to sell a meat lover's pizza to a vegetarian. So bottom line is data has got to be good. Now, it's wrong to think that all data is the same. It's, it's really not. And by having a long, um, and, and it's not by a long shot, and there, there are lots of good data sources out there, but there's a lot of bad data sources out there on the market. Um, and you have to get the most reliable. It's extremely important to the campaign. So how do you know? So let me give you kind of the, the, uh, the thing that we use to really determine what, um, what, data, what, what data is the best out there. So we get a sample of three different list companies in an area that, that we know um, and, and we have, we've had experience with in the past. And what we'll do is we'll get a list of all of them and then we'll compare them and see where they overlap. And the one that has the highest percentage of what all of those overlaps are generally points you to the best data in your area. And data can be different. I mean, it's not perfect data everywhere. So in some that we know, they're great in the Midwest, they're terrible in the Southeast, or they're excellent in the Northeast, and then they're subpar out West. So going through this little exercise might cost you a little bit, but I tell you, it'll save you a ton um, in, in the long run on this. And if you put that test together, I mean, as I described, I mean, it'll save you a lot of headaches and, and plus a lot, of, a lot of wasted money. Now, let's talk about what types of, of, of pieces to, uh, to send out. And really there's, there's, a, there's a lot of different types of pieces out there that you can do and a lot of different ideas and strategies. Um, you can send general pieces like this out there, which um, essentially say, you know, for all your insurance needs, call me. Um, or you can get even a little bit more specific and target people by specific demographics, whether they be uh, new movers or whether they be getting into the age where they're really starting to think more about life insurance. Um, those are all good, but it also, you know, it's, it's, it's a better targeting, but you've got to be really specific to catch attention nowadays. The more specific and the more individualized you get with them, the more response uh, that, that your campaign is going to generate. So you've got to grab their attention. So having that intrigue factor, um, it, what you're trying to do is stop them in their tracks and get them to read your, your piece so that you um, have to say and, and, and what you have to say and, and offer them. So uh, another good way of doing this is trying to catch their attention right away. I mean, there's things like out there where you see here that they're more of the um, handwritten type of samples. There's you know, specific messages that you put on the envelopes themselves. We use a full face envelope and show a, a photo of their actual recipient's home and then put that benefit statement right out for them. So, you know, you have to create that intrigue factor that and that personalization, um, which, is, which, is, which is key to all of this. And this is where that, that data aspect can come into play even more, that you can play off of some of those specific demographics that, that you've chosen to, to use. The money-saving message uh, out there is, is a powerful one, and we use it because it's, a, it's more of a common denominator that you know, everybody's out there to save money, and everybody doesn't want to spend more money than they have to. Um, and you know this is this is key to doing um, the the pieces and and the customization to it. So we have customized quotes that go out and they're like mock quotes that are sent out to each one of the specific homeowners. Um, and and the more specific information you can you can get on them and and the more um, specific that you can grab about their their house, uh, the more effective your piece is to get opened and to be acted upon. So um, let's kind of go over the overall uh, tips on this. So um, 
if, if you give them a reason to look at your piece, that's where the intrigue factor comes in. You know, give them a reason to consider this. Use that data. Keep it personalized. The more information you have about them, and, and the better their response is going to be. Um, always keep their interest first. If you can say, as you're looking at your piece, you know, all right, what's in it for me as reading it as the consumer? That's a great place to start. So instead of saying, well, how does this position me? Think about it from the minds of the consumer. What's in it for them? The fear of missing out, powerful motivator. And this is key in, in direct response organ type thing. So if you are expecting them to pick up the phone and call you or reach out to you in another way, you've got to have a reason to have, a, have, have something that gets them to call you and call now. And a great one on that is the, uh, the fear of missing out. In other words, call us before or this deal goes away, you know, that type of thing. And if the more one-to-one -one that you can make this feel, even, even better. So it doesn't seem so mass oriented that you can make it feel that one-to-one. -one. And again, use your data to your advantage. Be specific um, on uh, who they are, what they're trying to do, and, and, and what you're asking them to do. And that's where, you know, call us today or reach out to us at or visit us online, but give them directions. But Again, this is something that you can go overboard with too. If you give them 20 or 30 different ways to respond to you, um, it might be really confusing. Just don't over-inform, keep it simple. Give them an easy way to contact you. So we talked about the why, the where, the who, and the what. Um, but now the one, still a key portion of this is when. Um, that's where timing comes in. Um, Timing it can be super important to how you um, how your response rates are going on this. So you can also use the data here to help pinpoint when's the best time to reach them. You know, in in people's lives these days, re renewing insurance is not a date most have circled on their calendars. You know, they rely on their carrier, their agent to let them know when it's time to renew. Um, and and it's really this time that they're They'll, they'll think about taking some action to it. So we know that carriers generally send out between 40 and 45 days prior to renewal, which means it's landing in homes 30 and 40 days prior to that, prior to their X date. And this is a perfect time for you to reach out to them. So about when they get their renewal message, and if you put something in their hand saying, hey, you might be paying too much. I mean, this is the time that's going to be one of their, their peak times for them to to kind of pay attention to this. You know, so that window, that 30 to 40 days, it, it's small. Um, if you land too early, they might not be considering it. If you land too late, they may have already renewed. So, you know, it's critical to, to, to find out when exactly is that 30 to 40 day range. So it's a, it's a delicate balance to make sure that your pieces are landing um, at that perfect right time. And one of the things that's kind of been new this year is um, it, it, it's a trend that agents are starting to go more than just that 30 to 40 days. So especially in competitive areas where there's multiple people um, mailing on out to the same homeowners around that same time, it'll, it'll dilute your response. So in those areas, we're also implementing a 180 day prior to X date strategy. And that's um, basically hitting them six months prior to when um, their insurance is renewing. Um, and, and this kind of falls in two different ways and, and, and two different benefits to this, that not only can you hit them where it's less competitive, but also a lot of their auto insurance policies will, will be renewing at that time too, so that you can, you can have kind of a double whammy to do it at this. So if you're in an area where you might not be generating as, as much leads as you want to, out of your 30 to 40 day strategy, consider the 180 day. And from what we found, it has been really, um, really something that we've been pushing a lot of because there's, there's a lot of good response. Now, you have the right piece, it's hitting the right audience at the right time, are you done? I, I would say now that the real work begins for you. Um, now that you have to manage that response correctly. Um, and, and the goal of really any mailing piece or in advertising in general, is to help you instigate a conversation with the homeowners. Now with direct mail, they're calling you. 
So it's a little bit easier to engage them in that conversation, but it's important for you to get them to start talking or get your team to start talking to them. And not only about you know, the policy of their home, but also about all the other opportunities that you'll be able to help them with. And you wanna make sure that you get that off and started on the right foot. Um, and, and, and having somebody that answers that phone correctly is imperative to your success, especially with the direct mail. Um, and you have to be in ready and armed with all the information to answer the, the customer's calls. And you remember at the beginning when we're talking about the, the, the good customer interactions and, and what it can mean for you and, and your um, customers talking to their friends about you. I mean, this is all the first impression of your agency. As soon as you answer that phone, as soon as your team answers that phone, that's when that experience starts. So you've got to be treating them right. Now, it's critical of your staff to be well-trained and it's important to maximize every lead you get. I mean, you've worked hard and probably spent a lot of money on getting that person to call you. So every potential customer is either a make or break. So it's really important to have that call handled effectively. And you can get some great training from the folks here at CWC as they're truly the experts in that. And continual training and role playing, it's vital. And it can be the biggest and most successful um, investment that you make in your team is to make sure that they're, they're constantly trained. What happens if the customer calls and nobody's there to answer? Meaning that what if they're calling and um, it's when your lines are busy or it's 2 a.m. on Sunday? You might not think that there's a lot of these calls happening, um, but our Dart call tracking software tracks uh, hundreds of different agents um, all the time. And we're showing around 17 to 20% of total calls are missed. 20% of opportunities are gone by the wayside because no one answers the phone. That could be a hang up or that could be that, you know, it rings four or five times and then that person is moving on to somebody else. Now, I know a lot of you have calls that roll over to maybe your corporate number after hours, but still, while waiting for that person to come up, there's a lot of hangups and a lot of missed opportunities. So let's talk about what call tracking is. So call tracking digitally tracks and records every call generated from a particular phone number, meaning that it identifies the caller's name, address, phone number, and general demographics about them um, and each, uh, each caller and even starts a digital recording of the call, all behind the scenes without uh, either party really noticing any difference in the overall call. Um, but how it works is as, as soon as the caller hits that last digit, the system grabs their caller ID information, parses it against another database that tracks their address and where their, their phone is registered, and then starts a digital recording of the call and then forwards it directly to your agency. And this happens all within about a tenth of a second. And there's no call center involved. Um, it's just you and your team and the caller handling the call as you normally would. And with this in place, um, you, all the cards are on the table as far as your response goes. You'll know in real time exactly how many calls that your campaign is generating. You can pull reports and see not only the total number of calls in a, in a, in a specific time frame. you can even go and determine which areas, uh, which zips are pulling the best, and even identify what day and time people are calling the most. But just adding that and, and forgetting about it is not enough. You have to pay attention to the reporting and review the calls to really stay on top of it. And if it's not you, it needs to be someone on your team. Um, the call tracking can make it easier for you. It can send you the reports um, every single morning so you can get detailed summary of the prior day's calls just by opening up the email each morning. Um, but another one of these things that, that's really good about the system is that it can expose issues that you didn't even know that you had. As an example, um, call tracking system can identify when your phones go down. Um, you know, call tracking system identifies short calls and it can even email them um, to you that, that you've missed a call. Uh, and when there's multiple of these happening back to back, there's a problem. And, and, and 
this may not happen a lot, but it's actually happened to one of our uh, bigger agencies where a, a backhoe went in and clipped the main trunk line into their agency office and, and cut out all of their phone lines. And it was the call tracking system that notified them that there was a problem. But they got um, not only uh, the, the system spit out all the calls that they had missed that went to a uh, disconnected signal, um, but it also then forwarded it. We could go in, logged into the system, change the number where it was being forwarded to, and was sent to their team's cell phone numbers rather than just to the main number. And you could imagine what kind of disaster that would have caused if um, that was sent out and, and, and those that um, lines were clipped day after their count, day after their, their pieces landed into home. So, you know, I mentioned before that the, um, this will also can digitally track um, and record every single phone call. And this is great to use for, for, a, for a whole host of things. I mean, you can include staff training in that. Um, you, can, you can go back and review the calls and, and uh, you know, in case there's a, there's a phone number that you miss or something in there that you want to go back and just kind of review that maybe you didn't write down correctly the first time. And you know, it's it's a another cool feature that it has is actually call scoring, which goes off that um, call recording as well. So recently, um, our system had, has been able to translate those audio calls into um, text based, and then using AI is actually it can make a determination of what kind of call that was, and be able to put that information on that reporting screen that that you can see. So you can tell if it was a, an existing customer call or if it was a sales inquiry or whatever that, whatever that may be, you can actually go and see the call. So you can review it on the higher call scores or review on the lower call scores, kind of see what happens. And this, this part of this, this talk today is, you know, it, this call tracking system, if you grab one thing from today, make it be that add call tracking to your direct mail. Not only will it increase your bottom line by up to 20%, but it can provide you uh, a huge amount of valuable data about your agency and, and, and how you're doing. So I wanna go into now kind of the new advancements. Um, and these are kind of the, the, the newer things that, that we've seen this year and things that you ought to consider. Now, we've already really talked about the, the X dates and you know, experimenting throughout the process on you know, not only 30 to 40, but also looking at that 180 days, that six months prior, um, because it's, it's, it's gaining a lot of steam and you should certainly consider that. Second one is QR codes. QR codes have, um, although they've been around for over a decade, they've really exploded this last year, year and a half. And it's essentially that, that funny looking black and white um, image that you can put on the phone. It's a great way to bridge your um, direct mail to the web. And if, if you're not familiar with it, all you do is hover your phone over it and it'll link you to a particular web page that you wanna send it to. Now, a lot of agents that we're working with will have this sent directly to, let's say a quote page or a particular page in their website. So if a person doesn't want to uh, reach out to you by phone just yet, you're giving them a digital option directly from your printed piece that they can that they can take advantage of. So it doesn't cost you any more to add this to it. That's why we're recommending it a lot now in, in, in all the pieces that, that we do. The third um, advancement this year is informed delivery. Now, this is where the USPS can actually take photos of your mail and email it to you before it's actually delivered. So either the day of or the day before, you get an email that looks like this and says, hey, this is what's coming to your mailbox. They have black and white images of this that you can see. So um, it's, it's a cool piece that the Postal Service is doing um, and it's free. And the thing now is it's gaining a lot of traction. This has been out for a couple of years now, but 2021 for them, and really during the pandemic, had really increased it. Like last year, they saw almost a 40% increase in 
growth rate, uh, people signing up for this service. And 2022, it's expected to grow even more. And they started adding a different element to this where they're adding, instead of a black and white, they're also adding a place that can be sponsored. So if you're mailing to that particular area, they can put in a sponsorship piece on this that goes on the top of the email where they can um, have a link on out to a site um, right from your email that you can link them to you know, a page on, on your website or link it to anywhere on the web, similar to what a QR code does. So we, uh, we're investigating this as well and we hope to be, be offering this pretty soon. Now, to kind of recap, you know, there's, there's a lot of things to remember. Um, and we kind of went through a lot of these kind of fast, but this is, this is kind of the, the overall on direct mail that I, that I really want you to, to remember. Um, the first thing is, is it, it works. It has for years, and it's really the only form of advertising that stood the test of time really for generations. And it remains as relevant as ever. Um, I would bet most, if not all, the biggest and most successful agents um, out there use some form of direct mail. And, and even though um, now there's, there's so many different options, there's only one that reaches 100% of the market. And that truly is direct mail. And everybody has a mailbox so that you can reach them, you know, really um, where they have time to put a tangible piece in their hands that they can take and really really uh, uh, take it in rather than doing it in a 30 second, 20 second, or even a five second spot on TV or, uh, or online. But it's a tricky beast to get right. You know, it, it takes the right mix of, of wording and images and timing and um, audience to, to really make it work for you. It, it takes testing and measuring and then more testing and more measuring to really get it to where it, where it really needs to be for you. Um, but I'll tell you that that hard work pays off. Once you get the right mix, the sky's really the limit for your agency and go back to that, you know, even being able to promote the word of mouth and that good customer experience that we talked about at the beginning. But you have to test it and then you have to perfect it. Um, you could start small and, and grow from there. Um, but keep with it as it works for you. Um, and, and when you apply that good customer service and proper managing of the callers, you can really exponentially increase the success of the campaign for you. Now, now that all sounds good and it sounds da uh, you know, dandy and all, but here's the reality of it. The worst response you're gonna get is when you have with your direct mail is when you do it for the first time. It's kind of like building your agency. You've got to try it, you've got to find out what works and you got to change what doesn't and repeat over and over that process. But when you get to that best recipe, continue to treat, tweak it and, and continue to try new things, you'll constantly grow your success. Now we've been doing mail, mailing for about 20 years and actually 20 years and three weeks actually. Um, and we sent out millions of pieces for insurance uh, agents um, throughout the years, and, and we've tried everything, um, and, and we found out, honestly, just, just everything that, that doesn't work in this industry. But um, even though that we feel now that we have the best mailing pieces out there, we're still learning, and we're still constantly tweaking and making changes to our pieces to make them better for you. And while I'm here, I want to give you kind of an overall of, of, of uh, who we are and, 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 and the process that we do and what makes DART uh, different than any other options out there. We're marketers at our core. Um, when um, agents hire us, they, they get direct mail experts and people who have done it for years. Um, and they get that on their side more as a, more as a partner um, who is as invested in their success as they are. Um, you know, obviously we don't do well unless you, the agents do well. So we really go the extra length to make sure that you avoid the common mistakes that, that, that most people make in, when they're first starting direct mail. Um, we really make it a full service thing, and many, meaning that we're, we help you choose the right audience. We help you find where you're going to be the most competitive. Um, we offer the most uh, benefit statements to your, to your potential customers. We find out more about you and we really try and generate the best piece. Our, our graphic design team will customize that for you. 
And you know, with our with our system too, with that money saving thing, we can also um, generate that mock quote and uh, generate target premium specifically for your area. Um, and you know, we're gonna we're gonna be sending these out at the right time. And you remember that um, that short window that we talked about for the X date, that thirty to forty, um, or even that that one hundred and eighty. Um, date, the only way to really accomplish this is to send out those pieces every single week, which is what we do. So if you land these pieces out maybe just once a month, um, your, your, your window at best is 30 days wide. So in other words, 66% of your pieces will land either too early or too late. So that's why we mail these every single week. And, and also we're in partnership with the uh, Postal Service and that we're tracking every single piece all the way to the home. So we know the exact dates when these are landing. So if the post office is, um, is, is delivering slower, we can, we can adjust that X date to make sure we're landing right within that, right within that window. And a part of that, um, in, in a part of every one of our campaigns, we also offer the uh, call tracking number, which again, digitally tracks and records all the phone calls that you receive from the campaign. And we give you full access to all of that call data so that you can log in whenever you want, as much as you want, any time of the day. Now, um, we've been adding some, some different letters and I've I was telling you about, you know, the different types of things that we're doing to constantly kind of change up. We have our, our street view home letter. We also uh, are doing condo letters for a lot of areas of all, across the country where we're targeting that same thing um, with those mock quotes, but doing it just specifically for condo agents. Um, we've done uh, boat letters in various agents, you know, around for agents around the country. Um, and we're also starting up a brand new life insurance letters. You know, we've gotten a, a lot of agents that have been asking us about, you know, can we put something like this together um, to help them on the on the life side? So this is also something that we've uh, we've put into place and are now uh, now developing. But the bottom line is, we make it easy for you, and we're we're here to do the heavy lifting, and let your team concentrate on on answering the phones and being better at that. Um, that, that when the calls come in, you know that they're, uh, they're handling that correctly. So I wanna give you guys all a uh, reason for listening to me for, uh, for all this time and uh, um, wanna offer you an incentive and remind you of an incentive that CWC clients are um, entitled to with us. Um, that if you um, decide to, to, to run with us, we have a CWC bump up offer campaign. That means if you run at least a thousand pieces a week, we'll give you the 1500 piece price, 1500, 2000. We'll bump you up to the next piece rate to help you save money and, and to give you an incentive to, uh, to sign up with us. So even if you're doing the, the 2500, we'll bump, bump you up to the top piece rate, uh, which is the 500 piece. Um, and that can be as low as, as 62 cents a piece. So um, if you give us a call, you know, I, I put the phone number down there. Um, I've got an uh, email address. Give, give Tim or I a call um, and uh, we'll be happy to help you out. We're happy to talk with you, happy to have a conversation. And if it, even if it's, hey, I want to find out better ways to do this on myself, give us a call. We're happy to help in any way to make sure that, that you're doing direct mail correctly. And I know I've been, been talking a lot, so I wanted to uh, give you guys an opportunity if you wanted to, to ask any questions uh, from here and uh, kind of turn the floor back over to Joseph and see um, if, if there's any questions that, that there might have been out there. Absolutely, Dave. Thank you so much for this awesome presentation. A couple of takeaways. Y'all, the back end tracking is so important. Think about how many calls you're getting now after hours or on the weekends, and there's not a way to track that, right? Always, always, always use a different phone number for your mail pieces, whatever vendor that you use. That way, hopefully, you can somehow track it. But what's beautiful about Dave's system is the automation of the reporting, right? Be able to say, hey, here's who called yesterday. Being able to lock in and see, hey, who's here's who called. That is amazing. Um, I want to share my screen just real quick, Dave. So give me one second. Um, you know, I'm sharing a couple things. First, this is their website, dartmailings.com, where you guys can learn more, dartmailings.com. But I wanted to go over to our platform real quick. 
here at wigginsuniversity.com. Wiggins University, this is for everybody in CWC On Demand. Notice up here that there's a search, right? There's over 1,200 videos on this platform, Dave, over 90 courses. It's, there's a lot of content here that are for our members, but there's a search here. So if I search for direct mail, check this out. For CWC members, you can find every course that has chapters on direct mail and how we teach to work them. We've done live longer training sessions, like hour long training sessions that I just did a couple months ago on direct mail. We also have much shorter chapters in the lead generation and other courses. We have the CWC scripts. Y'all make sure your staff are utilizing the scripts. So here in the documents, we have over 100 documents and processes, right? Over 100. Some that are just for owners and managers eyes only, like example, compensation plans, example, handbooks, our hiring guides and process and all that. But here in that documents for staff, the very first document, CWC scripts and PDF format. The direct mail scripts are on page 11. Page 11, we give an amazing introduction on how to overcome the most common objections. So for CBC members on this call, make sure that you and your team are taking advantage of the powerful training that we teach you. Because these, these calls are expensive, Dave. These calls are expensive, right? But they're worth every penny because they're calling you to talk with you about your insurance. It is amazing. Um, and since I stopped sharing his thingy, I want to pull up. Uh, his little offer here. This is a fantastic offer. And yes, we have some questions we're going to get to y'all. If you have questions, please submit them in the Q&A. We'll get to these questions here in a second. Awesome offer for everything that you get with the customized pieces. The home pictures are awesome. Now, does that sometimes drive people to call and say, how'd you get a picture of my home? Right? How'd you get a picture? I mean, have you never heard of the Google machine? Right? There's Google, right? But sometimes agents complain. You know, sometimes your staff owners watching this call might complain like, why are we doing such low ball offers, which Dave will work with you on the ranges that you guys want to, to offer for your home quotes and stuff. We want it to be low enough to drive a call, right? Um, and there's kind of a sweet spot where it's too low or it's not low enough, whatever. But sometimes your staff might complain like, gosh, you know, these rates are like two or $300 less. And it's hard to explain to these people calling in. I'll say, stop, rewind a second. These people calling in. The campaign is working, right? Follow the CDBC scripts and talk path on how to overcome that objection on how what you received was an estimate. I'm so excited, Dave, that you're giving us a call today because you, Dave, you're the exact type of customer that we're confident we can help. That's why we identified you. So let's get your full details so I can get your accurate quote prepared right now. That's kind of our hmm. opening line just from memory. Um, right. Then we have some objections that people might give and how to overcome those. But y'all, worth every penny. We've used Dave for years. He's done mailings for us for years. For years, direct mail has been our top source, our top source, paid source. Um, uh, so awesome team there. Let's go to some questions. Let's go to some questions. Um, so some people have asked about AAV. Dave, let me ask you a question. Mm -hmm. Is it possible on your back end reporting to not activate the recordings? Absolutely. Who okay. Agents that, that do that. Okay. And, 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 and that's important too, that your staff knows that, you know, not to do things like grab um, credit card information directly on that, on that recorded line. But for us, it's just a click where you can, you can turn off that call recording. So for some of you with a certain carrier that have to use a certain phone number or a certain phone system, um, you might have to turn off the recording. What's beautiful is for those people with that certain carrier, with that certain phone system, those calls are recorded and transcribed. It's awesome. It's really, really cool on that carrier's phone system. So make sure that you're being compliant. Somebody asked if Dart is on that, uh, I'll just say that all states approved vendor list. Y'all, with direct mail, it's not like life transfers or internet leads with direct mail. You can use any local print shop or somebody like Dave, of course, um, as long as you don't use your carrier's logo, as long as you're not using your carrier's logo. But Dave, you work with hundreds of agents all across the country with all state, state farm, farmers, independent agencies. Well, so do we. We work with over 1,500 agencies active in our program today all across the country. And I know dozens that personally use you and love y'all. Um, dark video is playing over your commentary. Oh, crud. When I was on the website, was it playing a video? Oops. Or no, it might be playing on your side, Jim, um, if, if it took you to the website. Uh, let's see here. Shelly asked, is there a way to try to target demographics when you're talking about targeting demographics? 
to pull out mobile homes or manufactured homes potentially because we're not so good at those. Yep. And that's really where that, that um, square footage comes in. Um, if you put a minimum square footage down there of a thousand square foot, you're going to eliminate 90% of those. And even the ones that don't come through, as long as you're targeting that top 70% of home values, you eliminate virtually all of those mobile homes. And, and, and that's, that's a hard one to, uh, um, to, to, to ensure. So obviously, yes, we can pull those out. And likely condo targeting. I know, man, I sent a bunch of people to you in 2020 from Florida, right? Because when, when a certain carrier started to give certain points for condos, they yep. tore it up with your condo mailers. That's awesome. But no data is perfect. It's cool that you pull data from different sources and then like see where it overlaps and try to choose what's uh, most accurate. But y'all, there's no, there's no data point that's gonna ever be 100% accurate. Um, Sonia, my friend Sonia in California just had an amazing idea. Has anyone ever tried text me as a call to action? You know, we're teaching a lot now, Dave, to get people to opt into our texting platforms. That way we can follow up with them well, right? Follow up with them well. I love that call to action, Sonia. So maybe on their mail or could they customize, hey, feel free to text us, text us at this number. Would that be easy to add? And the more ways that you can that you can get people to respond, the more people will respond. Now, obviously, as we talked about before, you can go overboard on that. Don't do don't do ten or twenty. But sure. adding a text feature is great, and it's and it's great for the younger homeowners, which tend to be more digitally oriented to start. With. Absolutely. So, for example, a couple of months ago, I refinanced my mortgage. Right, home values have skyrocketed. Refinance my mortgage, do some restructuring and um, did some investing. Um, dude, I didn't talk to a soul. Not a soul. It was all done via email and texting, right? With my local bank here. I don't have time to talk to people. I'm on calls all day. I do six, seven, eight hours of video training sessions every day. Did it all via text. I showed up to closing. I was like, who am I supposed to see? I had to like look through my text. Oh, <laughs> where's Monica? Is Monica here, right? Texting is awesome. I love your QR codes. And y'all, we teach this in our lead manager training courses that I do with Ryan Cheo, um, how to create uh, quote forms, how to create quote forms, get QR codes to tie in to that, to link to that quote form. That is really cool. If they can scan their phone over QR code and quickly top in their basic details, you can have it, an option there to where they can click, say they opt in to receiving digital communications, including text. Guess what? Now we have their written consent for texting. So we can text, we can email, we can call. It's a beautiful thing. So dude, I love that you guys are incorporating QR codes. That is super slick. And Sonia, I love it. Let's get people texting. We text a lot, right? Text and email a lot, but we must do it compliantly. We must do it compliantly. Some people are asking about like expected response rates. What do you like to see as an expected response rate? A third of a percent, a half a percent? Like what's something to expect? And as, as you said, y'all, we got to do this over and over. Right, over right. and over. Especially at the beginning, we're shooting between a 0.5 and a 1% response rate um, for, for people. And generally, in the, where, where that fluctuates is the more competitive the market is, generally the lower um, that that response rate is. But that's really what we're considering as our, as our benchmark as response rates. So we've, we've have agents that are doing up to 3%. Um, and especially ones that have been tweaking it and going to the right areas and eliminating zip codes that aren't working as well as others, duplicating the ones that are others. That's where it really goes in. And the, and the, the agents that are with us, you know, for our, for a couple of rounds are, uh, are the ones that are with us for life. And, you know, I work with um, agencies in Florida and Texas and California, and there is a lot of shaking up in the industry, y'all, from rate increases to non-renewals right? Non-renewals. William asked a question, my friend, William. I hope you made it home from the workshop, William. Uh, William said, we have a local carrier that raised our home rates by 20%. Can we identify who they insure? Probably not. That information is not out there, right? But if it's a big market share type company and you can target areas where you're pretty competitive in, and y'all, the rating, the rating is getting by street now. It's not just by zip code. They're using insurance carriers using longitudes and latitudes. I don't know which is which, which one's up and down? I don't know, but they're using the lines, longitude and latitude. They're breaking it down by street, 
right? One street over, same house could be a little bit different. So identifying where you guys are competitive and you can attack those zip areas, the zip codes and, and all of that. Uh, but William, go after them. Y'all, there's a lot of shaking up in the industry this year. That's great. That's great. Now, you might be saying, Joseph, I really don't like having to handle rate increases. Rate increases are amazing for your business, right? Amazing for your business, y'all, for your growing book and your revenue and, and renewals, right? Um, and sure, it brings unique challenges, but it gives us opportunities to talk to our customers, make sure that we're meeting all of their needs, not just where they live, but what they drive, their liability, toys, motorcycles, boats, ATVs, etc. cetera. Uh, Eva said, the backend reporting platform, is that included with all of your levels, whether they do a thousand pieces a week or? All included, every piece, every level that you want, it's included in. And man, it's slick. It is really, really slick to have that data on the back end. That is awesome. Joel wants to know, what if Google Images doesn't have a picture of the home? Do we skip them or, or does it put a generic picture? I'll add that to his question. What do you do if it doesn't have a likely picture? Yeah. So if it's if it's a picture that's a blurry picture, or if that it's that it's that it's not in their database, maybe it's behind a locked gate. Um, we generally put a, a home that's from that area in as a stock image okay. photo on that. That that's way, we're still reaching the homeowner, still reaching that potential, um, and still creating the intrigue with the message that if you're spending more than X amount in premium, that you may be paying too much. Um, Henry said, my rates pretty close to me are pretty high. What's the furthest radius you might recommend? Five to 10 miles? I mean, you probably have agencies that market all over an entire state, right? Mm -hmm. I guess yeah. that just kind of depends on their thing. Here's the thing, y'all. A couple of years ago, I swear to God, Dave, this is a true story you can use as a testimonial. Two or three years ago, we had a prospect mail us your letter. I swear to God, you can ask Beth Lambert in Vegas. Hey, Joseph said this happened. Is that true? Mailed us a letter, like the letter, the flyer, with a check, Dave, with a check. Man, she was ready to buy that insurance. She was ready. Wow. So Kenzie, my front office girl, the girl that checked the mail, Kenzie says, um, Joseph, I can't find this policy in the system. So I'm like, dude, there's no policy for that. That's a freaking letter we mailed to that. So I said, give it to Beth. <laughs> Beth called them, closed them. Of course, it was two, three, four hundred dollars more than what was on the letter, but we built them a great replacement cost policy. And you know, we bundled those cars in that umbrella. But I thought you'd like to hear that. But anyway, that is awesome. How far out do you typically see people do? What do you recommend in terms of a radius around office? Now, like I always say, start in your own backyard, but really go where you're most competitive. Where you can be most competitive rate doesn't have to be within a 10 mile radius or a 50 mile radius. And like Joseph said, we we market for people all over their states. And generally where um, the, the, let's say the bigger players might be are the people who, who mail out more, um, they're trying to find out areas in the state where they can be most competitive or where there's opportunities. And that's where we, we kind of use that data and that um, thing to kind of help them choose which one of those zips is gonna be best for them. Yeah, and just to add to that story, I remember now while I wanna tell you that example, you'll also have some of your prospects if you mail out further, that take your letter into other local agency saying, hey, can you meet this price? Now, if you're not branding your carrier, it would be really hard for them to do that. But we've mm -hmm. had agents in our area market like from two, three, four hours away and people bring in their direct mail. All right, thanks for the lead. That's my customer. All right, we're gonna sit down and we're gonna write them. So you do run that small risk. You do run that small risk. Uh, we got time for one more question that I'm gonna pull up your little offer slide again one more time. Um, Ken Marcus wanted to know how customized you get. What if I don't want like the picture in the window envelope and I want it to look more like a hand address type thing. Do you have a hand address font yep. or is there any other way to customize programs for your agents? Correct. So we have agents that don't want to send out the, uh, the, the home, the pictures of the home. So we have, we take what's essentially that condo letter, which is a handwritten piece that shows through the window. And that's what we replace on after them. We have a lot of agents that do that too and have yeah. a lot of success with it as well. Gotcha. Well, real quick, I'm going to pull up your little slide here, you know, for the offer, offer piece, the step up rate. Y'all reach out to dbanco at dartdirectmail.com or tim at dartdirectmail.com. Check them out at dartmailings.com. Um, direct mail is an investment. Direct mail is an investment, but y'all, it allows you to target likely homeowners who are likely married with multiple cars, like the best type prospects. And we know we got a bundle. Leading with home is an amazing strategy. Leading with home is an amazing strategy. 
Um, so I can't recommend Dave more. He's worked with dozens and dozens of our members, been a great partner for us and helped us write hundreds and hundreds of policies at Craig Wiggins Agency. So Dave, thank you for your amazing content and training. Ladies and gentlemen on this call, thank you for your time watching live or watching the recording. I appreciate y'all very much. Dave, any final thoughts from you, my friend? If anybody has any questions that they wanna ask, and even if, again, if it's about kind of your own uh, mailing campaign, give us a call. We're happy to do that. We love talking with agents and, you know, love, you know, answering any questions that we can have that can make this, uh, make this a, a worthwhile uh, thing for you to do for your agency. Very good. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, it's time to get back to work. We got policies to write and people to protect. Let's get off this call, pick up that phone, call somebody, quote somebody, close somebody, or work with your team members who are doing all that phone work and let's grow today. Thanks, Dave. Thanks to all. Now, back to work. Bye-bye. Thank Hi.